When I was at university, I was very strategic about how I approached my labs, assignments, tests, and exams. I knew that if I set up a spreadsheet, I would be able to calculate what my final exam mark would need to be in order for me to pass the whole paper. So in this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the weighted average of all of your grades so far so that you can best prepare going into your exam. And along the way, I might share with you some tips and tricks on how to best prepare yourself for the year overall. Let's go. So here we've got our setup where we have our assessments on the left, the weighting in the middle and the grade at the end. Now to calculate the individual weighted grade for each of these items is pretty easy. We just multiply these two things together. Google Sheets even knows we're about to do that. So it's given us that suggestion. I'm going to press tab on that so that it accepts it. And we can see that even though we got 62 out of 100 for our labs, it was only worth 5%. So the total weighted grade is 3.1. We can just double click on that handle and it fills in all of the information that we need so far. We can see that we don't have a grade for the final exam. So we're going to use this spreadsheet to calculate what our grade should be in order to pass the whole course. Now let's go back to our weighted grades that we've already calculated. For our final grade, all we need to do is type in sum. Again, it gives us what it thinks we want, which is F3 to F10. I'm going to press tab and that gives us the uh, total sum of all of these numbers. So we're currently sitting at 58.65. And if we enter a number into this exam, let's say we're expecting a high grade, we can type in the number 95 here, copy this formula down to the bottom row, and we get a final grade of 82.4 but maybe we won't get a 95 in the final exam. Maybe we'll be a little bit more realistic and say we get a 70. In this case, our final grade will be a 76.15. So that's just one way to calculate the overall weighted average for all of our grades. Another way is using the sum product. So let's say we don't care about any of these weighted grades. We're going to ignore those for now and start with an equals. We'll type in sum product. And then we're going to select the percentages, the weightings and the grades. Press enter and again we get 76.15. I'm going to center that and we're good to go. Of course, there is another way to calculate our weighted average. In Google Sheets, we actually have an average.weighted. So we select that one. We first need to select the values, which is these, and then the weights afterwards. Press enter, we get 76.15. So that's three ways to calculate the average weighted grade, but let's go back to this exam grade here. If we delete this, we see that sum product and sum, they both work perfectly fine, but the average dot weighted ends up getting an error. This is saying that we don't have a number in here, so we can't use average dot weighted. So keep that in mind when you are setting up your spreadsheet. Now let's just delete this average dot weighted because we don't need it, we have this sum product. But we do need to keep in mind that there are scenarios where these percentages here don't add up to 100. So let's just edit this sum product just in case these weightings don't add up to 100, which does happen every now and then. All we need to do is divide by the sum of these weightings. Now these weightings in this case add up to 100%, so we should still get 58.65. Now I have seen some comments online saying that this is not an appropriate way to calculate some product. Personally, this is the way I would use it because this gives us a little bit of a hint of what we need going into the final exam. We know we're going to need a fairly high grade in order to pass the final. But nonetheless, there are arguments saying that this should not be a sum. It should be a sum if. Now the sum if would be E3 to E10 is greater than or equal to zero in double quotation marks. We'll put a comma and then we use these weightings here. Close the bracket and we can see the number is now 78.2. So all this is saying is up to this point in time or up to this point in our data, our current weighted average is 78.2. And then when we get to the exam, the weighted average will then change. Now I don't like this very much because it doesn't give us as much information as we need. We do know that we're going to sit the final exam. And if we put in a 75 for our grade, we can see that our weighted average drops to 77.4. It was 78.2, now 77.4. Whereas the other way, let's take a look at this one here. If we don't have our exam grade, then we can see we need to step up our game a little bit. So personally, I think that this top one gives us a little bit more information than this bottom one does. We don't need to know what our current weighted grade is because by the end of the year, the exam will be taken into account. So I'm actually going to change this back to the sum of these values here. 
And now we can go and play with these numbers here, 50, 80, and that tells us what our final grade is going to be. Now let's say that we're not doing so well. Here's a little bit of a strategy. Take a look at these assignment grades. Now personally, I would not be happy with these assignment grades at all. Going through university or at the very start of university, I told myself my assignment grades will be as high as possible, as close to 100% as possible. And I don't think I ever went below 94% for any assignment across my entire schooling. Now, the reason for that is because you have a lot of time to research not only the topic, but how your assignments should be structured. So you have time for the assignments. Tests and exams, on the other hand, you have less control over. You don't know on the day if you're going to be stressed or fatigued or hungry or sick. So tests and exams, you may give yourself some wiggle room and accept a lower grade because they are harder to predict. Assignments, keep them as high as you can and that will put you in the best position for your tests and exams because tests and exams usually do have repeated content from the assignments. Now let's head back to the spreadsheet and see how we can calculate the final exam mark if our grades are not so great. Now we can see here that the grades have been updated and they're not looking so great. They're quite low, but we need to pass this paper. We haven't failed any of the assignments or the tests so far. So we need to make sure that our final exam is enough to pass. Now we could just chuck in some numbers here. Maybe we think 30, not quite enough because we need this to be 51 or higher. So maybe this should be 50. Well, that says 53, so we don't actually have to aim for exactly 50% in the final exam. We do have some wiggle room. But instead of just picking arbitrary numbers to put in there, what we can use is the goal seek. So if we go up to extensions and then add-ons, we can click on get add-ons. And then up the top, we search for goal seek. Now there's going to be two that pop up. This one on the left is by Google. So I'm going to click on that one click on install and click on continue. We'll need to approve everything. Click done, close this down. And now up the top, when we click on extensions, we can see goal seekers here, click open. That's gonna open up this sidebar. Now the first field is set cell. This is saying, which cell do you want to be the target? Now I want this cell down here to be the target. So I'm going to select this one, click back in the field and then click this window. It automatically selects sheet 1F2 and the value we want is 51. What cell are we going to change? I'm going to click this one over here and then click the window again. We can see some options down here. We have maximum iterations. How many times do you want this to go through? What is the tolerance and what is the time limit? Now this is a very small tolerance. We don't need it to be that small. We can just put in one there because we want 51. We don't want like 50.0009 or something like that. Click on solve and then we're going to see some changes happen over here in the spreadsheet and then goal seek is complete within a few seconds. So in order to get 51, we're going to need an exam grade of 40. So that's a few different ways of calculating your weighted average of your grades in Google Sheets and using goal seek. Now it's pretty much exactly the same in Microsoft Excel, except Excel's goal seek is a little bit more efficient, a little bit more faster. So I guess Microsoft Excel does win on this one, but maybe we'll do a battle round in the future. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see that. Thanks for sticking around and I'll see you in the next video.